Vajan Stefana, fish bear. Welcome to another edition of Bands, Bikes and Booze Reviews. This is Vian Stefana Fest Beer. And this is one I thought I'd reviewed, but I hadn't. What I'd actually reviewed was the Schneiderweist Fest Beer. So this is going to be a new one for me. Somebody recently asked me if I'd reviewed it or not, and I said yes. I was a big fat liar. But I'm here to put that right. So here I have a bottle of this Vian Stefana Fest beer. Now, Vian Stefana, if you're not aware, are reputed to be the oldest brewery in the world. It's been disputed, and the Kloster Veltenberg Brewery is touted as being the oldest. They, not them personally, but it has been put out there that the document which states that Vian Stefana is the oldest brewery in the world is actually a 16th century forgery. And the true date of the brewery brewery's founding is at least a couple of hundred years older, which would make the Veltenberg, Kloster Veltenberg, the oldest brewery in the world. It's been disputed. I don't think there's ever gonna be a resolution to it. So for that reason, I'm not going to say that Vian Stefana is the oldest brewery in the world. I would say that it is the disputed oldest brewery in the world. And when I review Veltenberg beers, which I have, and they are absolutely fantastic, again, I will say that that is disputed. So I don't want to, I mean, I see it touted around a lot on these reviews and I've done it myself. Until you really get into the, the history and the research that, uh, that these breweries deserve, that you find out that maybe things aren't as they seem. However, forgetting all that, they make some fantastic beer. I think these are the only real contenders to the crown of best vice beer brewer in Germany. That of course is held by Schneiderweiss, but this lot, I always say it's Schneiderweiss and then I'll have one of their vice beers and I I just think, mm, am I getting it right here? So it's a real tough one to me, but needless to say, they're a really good brewery. They're one of the best, if not, well, are they the best? They are one of the best, certainly a contender along with the Munich Big Six, even Hacker Shaw, who in my opinion are one of the most consistent brewers from Munich. But needless to say, they're, they're good at what they do. And I've tried lots of their beer. And think I've, in fact, I think I've tried most of their beers. This Fest beer I have tried before. It's just I, I hadn't reviewed it, and I thought I had. So as I say, I'm here to put this right. But it's looking quite good. It now it's a Fest beer. What's a Fest beer? Well, Fest beer is of course for the October Fest, and it was up until recently Martin. However, a lot of the brewers now are brewing a slightly stronger Hellas and they're putting that out as their fest beer. I don't know why. Martin is a nice style of beer. I do like it. It's very malty. It's quite sweet, especially sweet. In fact, I've noticed that the beers this year have been quite sweet to the point where I think some of them may have a little bit of glucose in there it's bordering on that kind of sweetness now of course as you know the vine Reinheitsgebot I don't hold it in much regard anymore because when you look into that you just see that it's a bit of a market gimmick originally brought up to stop people using malt that could be used for bread for brewing in beer so they put this stipulation out saying that beer can only contain four ingredients malted barley, 
which is a slightly cheaper, less good quality than the than the malt that was being used to to make bread. And then you got the hops, the water, and yeast as well. Water, malt, or malt with barley, hops, and yeast. Wheat is allowed as well. There was an exception that would allow the introduction of wheat. I think that was introduced in the 1600s. They're the four main ingredients that you can use, but don't read too much into that because there is other things. This notion that German beer doesn't contain any chemicals is an absolute lie. Don't believe it for a word. There's chemicals in everything. Some of the water's been treated with chemicals. There is uh, that stuff called PVPP, which is a clarifying agent, which is basically vinyl. Smells like Yoohoo glue, if you've ever smelt that. They use that for, in certain breweries do, but I should make that clear, not all breweries, certain breweries do, to clear the beer, like, like the British breweries, you use it in glass. And there's other things in that go in there as well. And they get around that Reinheitsgebot by not being in the final product. So you can have chemicals introduced at various brewing stages, then taken out. But there has been chemicals introduced. And also there is a clause in the Reinheitsgebot which means, or which allows, adjuncts to be added to beer for export. And there was an amendment in 1992 which relaxed the adjuncts even further. So, yeah, don't read too much into that Reinheitsgebot is the bottom line. Anyway, enough about that, let's get on to the beer. Vian Stefana Fest beer. That is a 500ml bottle. That is 5.8%, which is about right. And it contains the usual water, malt, barley and hops. And that's about it really. It's supposedly a Martzen style, but Martzen is one of these beers that can range in color from being very dark amber to almost Hellas-like. And I think from memory, this is gonna be one of them lighter colored beers. But if you see a, a Fest beer that's quite dark or quite amber in color, that's perfectly acceptable. So with that in mind, oh, just a quick one on the IBUs. It's 26 IBU, which is relatively sweet, about average for a lager. And it's, it's got to be taken, these IBUs, as I say, have got to be taken into context. You have to look at what the style of beer is, look at what the IBUs are, and then match them up. You can't just say, you know, uh, uh, a West Coast IPA, which is 38 percent, uh, 38 IBUs. Oh, that's really, really bitter. Well, because the style is bitter, that's actually not too bitter for a West Coast IPA. Normally, they're up in the 40s, but that's what I mean when I talk about IBUs. They all are relative to the style of beer that they are. So let's open this beer up and let's see what's going on. I have to say, the studio is almost done. I'm waiting to get a desk in there and I can set all the cameras up and everything and I will start doing reviews in there once everything is ready to go. I have got a video coming up of the, more or less the finished article. I'll be putting that up soon, keep an eye out for that. There is the cap, that is the Vine Stefano, or that is the coat of arms that they have on their caps. It should be noted that there is a, a university of brewing in Weinstefan, which is absolutely amazing. When I've seen a few videos of it and the experimentation that goes on there with different styles of yeast. They have various taste tests and yeah, lots of science involved in the brewing of beer. Lots of experimentation with yeast as well. There it is in the glass and it, my memory wasn't shot to pieces as it normally is. That is quite a light color. Not too much carbonation Carbonation in there. It's very fine bubbles in there. Foamy, uniform white head. If you look at the head, you can I don't know whether the camera is gonna pick this up, but there's very tightly packed bubbles. When you see that, bubbles that are very uniform in size and shape, that's the sign of a good beer and a good brewer who knows what they're doing. Oh, that smells lovely. 
there's a lot of that almost biscuity type malt, the liquid bread, lemon citrus, little touch of sulphur, perfect. Exactly what you'd expect from a good Bavarian beer. Now it's filtered, so there's no, there's no floaters in there. And this is, as I said, a lighter colour Martzen. And it looks and smells absolutely amazing. Drinking it out of a Hofbrau glass, which are their Bavarian cousins. Let's get it down the hatch. Zum Wohl, as they say in Germany. Oh, that is lovely. That's superb. Light mouthfeel, super smooth, lovely fine carbonation, which just, <clears throat> just puts an emphasis on the flavour. And then you've got that big, lovely bread, bordering on a biscuit type finish from the malt. That is absolutely gorgeous. But the biggest thing for me about this, the flavour's fantastic, the mouthfeel is fantastic, but it's just the drinkability and the refreshment on this. Now this is cold, it's come out of the fridge, and I'm still getting all them great flavours. There is a sweetness in there, which, which you don't normally find in your average Hellas. There, it, it, it's slightly sugary sweet, which I think is possibly coming from some type of glucose in there, but regardless, whether there is or isn't, I can't say for certain, it does have that slight sweetness, which you could possibly get from malt, but I think it's much easier to get from glucose syrup, but either way, it's, it's absolutely gorgeous. There's a lovely lemon citrus on that as well. Again, very subtle, but it's, it just gives it a little, a little bit of an edge to the flavour. It's superb. I cannot fault that one bit. Now, I've tried quite a few fest beers this, this fest beer season. It's only September now, but this is when all the, all the stuff is out. This is really good, I have to say as Fest Beers goes, it's it's up there with the best. However, last year was, for me, Hofbrau was the best. This year, I tried the Hackershaw stuff, and for me, that was the best. It was superb, and I've reviewed it already on the channel, but for me, this year, and I do, I do this every year, I'll go through the October Fest Beers. I even tried some of the Lidl Fest Beer. That was okay, for the price. I mean, it, it didn't pull up any trees. It was very run-of-the-mill fest beer, for, but for the price, that's what makes it stand out because it's so cheap. This, I mean, this is superb. This is great beer. It's lovely. But I just don't think it's as good as the Hackershaw stuff. It's not far off, don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm comparing the best with the best here. And I think the Hackershaw stuff, for me, just edges it a little bit. But I'm loving it. This is going down really nicely. Drinkability, 100% in there. Flavour-wise, superb. It's, it's got everything that you would expect in a decent fest beer. Really good. So what is the verdict on Weinstefana Festbier? Well, this is a beer that I thought I'd put up on the channel when reviewed over a year ago, but apparently I haven't. I've done a search and I can't find it, so here is me doing this review. And 
I've tried it before, like I've drank it quite a few times and it's lovely. <laughs> really good. Everything you'd expect from a decent Martzen stroke fest beer. It's got that sweetness on it that you normally get from a, a Martzen. Yeah. You'll find that in Martzen beers, you, you will get a sweetness which is almost like a glucose syrup style sweetness, but it's very subtle. It's not like the shit that you get in you know, macro brew beer where they pour chunks of it in there and it, it just fucking overwhelms it. It's very, very subtle. It's the sign of a good brewer. If they have done that, I mean, they could potentially have got exceptionally sweet crystal malt and just put a lot of that in there and it's given it that. That would be quite expensive to do and quite lengthy, but if they have, then I mean, even better. But it's, it's fantastic stuff. However, I don't think it, for me this year, the Hackershaw stuff for me is the best one I've tried so far. I didn't review it because I've reviewed it already on the channel. Maybe I should review it again. I don't know. Should I do this? I mean, does the recipe change from year to year? I, I couldn't tell you. But for me this year, maybe it's my palate adjusting, and this is all personal opinion, you know, you may have your own opinion on what's the best Oktoberfest beer. For me this year, it's the Hacker Shaw stuff. This is up there with it though. I mean, this is really good. I tried the Paulana Oktoberfest beer, again, really nice. I mean, trying to compare the Paulana and this stuff. Yeah, yeah you'd struggle. And the Hofbrau stuff as well, that, that was superb. That was for me last year, as I said earlier in the, in the video, I said the, uh, the Hofbrau stuff was for me the best last year. But I think the Hackershaw tops it this year. This is a very close contender, but not quite up there. For that reason, on its own, if I was not comparing this with anyone, this would be a 10 out of 10 beer. But because I've tried the Hackershaw stuff, I think I'm going to have to give this a nine and a half. But it's fucking superb. I think it's 199 a bottle, so you ain't going to go wrong with that. So if you see this online, I urge you to try some. It's a seasonal beer, so you won't get it all year round. This is the time of year you're going to find that. It's currently September 2021. I don't know, I'm going to try and get this out for and around October and for the October Fest. So, yeah, fill your boots. Recommended. And remember, beer is working class champagne.